live from Studio 1A. Welcome to the season premiere of Getting Out of America with your host, Philip Tesha. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Philip Tayshoff, and welcome to Getting Out of America. If you don't know what this is, we're kind of like a travel show, except we're helping you travel the hell out of the country. You see, during the election, almost the entire country partaked in this ceremony of, bah, if my candidate doesn't win, I'm moving to Canada, or something like that. So now that the election's over and a clear winner has been chosen, it's time for all of you who said you were going to leave to, well, you know, actually pack your things and do it. But don't worry. Because over the course of tonight's program, we're going to help you find that new country that's less likely to implode on itself. Trust me, it's going to be one hell of an adventure. Now, if you're still convinced you want to stay here in the U.S. of A., then you are clearly lost. So please, allow me to be your guide and help you back into the light. And because this is television, even if you don't want me to read opinions at you, I still have another half of this monologue left. So strap in. Let's see here we go. Let's get the elephant out of the room. Trump won. It's one of the biggest upsets in a presidential election, and there's still a whole lot to process. But as Donald Trump begins to detail his policies and start his transition into presidency, one thing is for sure. It's hard to deny that Trump's proposed government is kind of shady at best. Let me throw an analogy at you. This whole thing kind of reminds me of a Zeppelin. I know, it sounds like a stretch, but roll with me here. You see, a Zeppelin sounds cool. The name alone captures all the attention in the room. Zeppelin. It sounds sharp and expensive, but it's not just the sound. It looks cool too. Seriously, when people look at a Zeppelin, it captivates the imagination of its onlookers. It's so impractical, it's majestic. But let's not forget that a Zeppelin is still impractical. It's fragile, it's outdated, and there's so many other types of aircraft that actually belong in the sky over it. Plus, when you think of what a Zeppelin actually is, it's like 85% dangerous flammable gases and 15% empty promises. Not only that, we have history to prove that Zeppelins were a disaster. And before you argue with me about how Zeppelins should come back, I'm gonna remind you of a little historical event called the Hindenburg disaster. Now, I'm not comparing Donald Trump and his new government proposals to the Hindenburg disaster, and by extension, the Nazis. That would be horrible. All I'm saying is that Donald Trump is going to slam this country down like it's 1937. Which coincidentally, it's going to be the same year civil rights are going to get pushed back to. So, ladies, you have something to look forward to. Now, I'm sure some of you are pretty disappointed with that analogy. You're expecting more facts and news and political humor and a lot less Zeppelins in our argument. But if that's the case, you clearly missed when I said that we're a travel show, not a political show. So I guess we should finally do our job. We've been getting videos from countries all over the world wanting you, the American people, to immigrate to their nation. This one that we're going to play for you is from Canada. Please enjoy. Bonjour, friends. Over the past few months, the Canadian Immigration Office has received lots of new applicants. And I'm here to tell you, keep them coming. We will welcome anyone who's willing to embrace Canadian society. But I feel I need to educate you on a few things first before you arrived. First, our national animal is not, in fact, a moose. While there are many moose, mooses, moose in Canada, we don't want them here. In fact, we'd like it if you American hunters could take them off our backs, like with your guns and shooting things. Pew, 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 Secondly, pew, pew. we produce much more than maple syrup. We're not the syrup chugging, hockey pucking folk you know us as. We produce things like oil and gold, like the pipeline we almost ran through North Dakota. So come to Canada and we'll welcome you with open arms. Just don't be your typical American, eh? Wasn't that just precious? Now we have a lot of those videos for you to hold on. Oh, so Buck, on. what are you doing on. on stage? I thought this show was about keeping people in America, Phil. No, we're clearly called getting out of America, and who let you out of your cage? That's not the point. Look, I made a whole tape, and we're gonna make America great again. Oh my God, it. Buck, right. did you take a camera and shoot a segment? Yeah, oh look, they have God. it. They have it in there. Roll the tape. Don't. Roll it. I will fire do you it. if you do. I'm Buck Jordan, and today we're going to find out why people want to stay in the great country of America. Did it ever cross your mind to leave the country when Donald Trump got elected? No. No, this is my home. Uh, no, not at all. Never, never, never. I want to stay in America because of a Starbucks. I love a Starbucks. I want to be in whatever is a Starbucks. So you think Starbucks is like the personification of America? Yeah, yeah, the coffee, large coffee, whatever. That we, I don't know, I, I think... America doesn't care about the taste anymore. 
it's about the size or whatever, so you make a big impression and you're ready to go. Did it ever cross your mind to leave the country when Donald Trump got elected? Yes. Of course. I don't want my president with no flip in the front of his head. Yeah, but now I'm just hoping he does a good job. Why would you ever want to do such a thing? Because he's a racist mother <laughs> Well, ho hold on, hold on. What, what exactly makes him racist? I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> Two hours later. Building a wall between Mexico, I don't know. <laughs> But he said it's going to be a very big, beautiful wall with a <laughs> big, care, beautiful man. gate right in the middle of it. <laughs> I don't care, man. That's racist. Number one. Are you ready? Are you ready? We will build a great wall along the southern border. And Mexico will pay for the wall. When asked where they would go and what it would take for them to leave, here's what they had to say. For something to make me want to leave where I was born and raised, it would have to take like a volcanic eruption that just covers everything. Somewhere I would go, Madagascar. Puerto Rico. Man, Puerto Rico has a lot of depth, so I don't know. All right, well, so do we. I mean, yeah. America, right? I would go definitely to Colombia. I would go to Colombia, nice people, warm people, you get pretty girls. If you're a guy, you can get pretty girls. If you're a girl, you can get pretty damn nice uh, guys. I would go to Colombia. I encourage all the people to go to Colombia. I thought you encouraged everyone to go to America since yeah, you were staying. Yeah, yeah, America, America. I, I, I mean America. Probably like Europe or like Greenland or something. Like Probably to Rome. Rome loves me. When asked why they haven't left yet, here's what those students had to say. Well, you know, I'm in school. I don't graduate until May, so maybe when I leave, I have a passport. I, I don't have a passport, and other countries kind of suck. America. I think it's dumb. Uh, it's them not knowing anything about Europe or Canada or anyone, like their currency or their government or anything. is just real idiotic and irrational for them to want to move there. We then asked why they thought people would want to leave. Honestly, I, I don't know. I mean, people, they, they follow social media a lot. They follow media, period, a lot. You know, and a lot of people, they just go off of the hype or what is being blasted through media outlets opposed to doing, you know, research for themselves, getting information and facts for themselves to really see what's going on, where people stand and what people support and believe in. Well, I think most of the people that said they were going to leave, they were probably following social media and uh, trying to be funny in a way, things like that. Uh, they definitely, you know, like, it's not like you wake up and I'm just going to drop everything and move. So it's a reaction, and also that can germinate more reaction from other people. I know a few people that would want to leave, but they wouldn't. They're just saying that just because, like, everyone else is saying it. I don't think anyone's done any research on like Canada's government or anything. I think everyone's just really irrational nowadays. They just kind of just go with the flow. So why do they want to stay here? Because America's red, white, and better than you. That's why. Think about other countries. They take August off. Off. They go to work, stroll home, maybe stop at the cafe. But why aren't the people you just saw like that? Why aren't we like that? Because we're crazy, hardworking, driven believers. That's why. Those other countries think we're nuts. Was Bill Gates nuts? Elon Musk? Were we crazy when we pointed to the moon? That's right, we went there. And you know what we got? Bored. So we put a car up there, left the keys in it. You know why? Because we're the only ones going back, that's why. But I digress. Bottom line, if you work hard and believe in your dreams, anything is possible. As for all the freedom, that's the upside of only taking one week off in August. America, America, America. I can't believe he got a camera. I'm sorry for the mental trauma you just experienced. We're going to do what we were planning to before and show you a country recruitment video from Mexico. And after that, a groovy new segment we like to call Find Your Wife. Again, I'm so sorry you had to watch that. Gringos, tal vez los sorprenda que los estemos invitando aquí a nuestro país, en México. Ustedes han sido rudos y crueles con nosotros, pero somos mejores que ustedes. Oh, somos mejores que eso. Nosotros no los vamos a desechar 
o los vamos a prohibir que vengan a nuestro país. Nosotros nos vamos a construir barreras para mantenernos afuera porque entendemos que somos mejores cuando trabajamos juntos. Entonces, ¿por qué la cultura mexicana? Bueno, bueno nuestra comida habla por sí mismo y también nuestra historia en deportes y entretenimiento. Estamos orgullosos de nuestra cultura y de nuestras tradiciones. Entonces, vengan a nuestro país. Queremos que vengan. Here in Mexico, we do not build barriers, we aim to break them. Y eso es todo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back and welcome to a new segment we like to call Find Your Wife. Now, we understand that immigration these days in other countries is getting harder to pass. That got us thinking, isn't there an easier way? Of course there is. It's called marrying your way into citizenship. We understand that not all the countries have the amenities and the luxuries that America does, but that's why we're here. We're going to help you weed out all those undesirable nations and help you find the one that fits your needs best. What we're about to do right now is run a simulation. We want you to take notes on how our American man asks the right questions to find something that he wants. And that something is getting out of America. We have three lovely nations for you to choose from. The only question is, which one is right for you? This here is Zach. He's from San Francisco, California. Zach, how are you doing today? I am doing really well, and I'm ready to get the heck out of this country. <laughs> Amen, brother. All right, let's go see our other countries. From Venezuela, we have Jocelyn. From Panama, we have Patty. And from France, we have David. How about you guys tell us a little about yourselves, and then we'll go straight into questioning. Well, my name is just in Virginia Maria de Los Angeles. Um, yeah, I am from Venezuela. I love yellow. Uh, I have three chickens, two cats, two dogs. One of them has three legs. I have a son that has two legs. Hi, I'm Patty. I'm from Panama. I clean houses for a living. I can clean your house real good. I have nine siblings. My favorite color is green. My favorite word is card. I am David. Uh, I have uh, two siblings, sisters, no parents. I am an artist, entrepreneur, and writer. Um, I have, uh, I had a cat, but uh, he ruined my new curtains, and I could not have that, so he jumped off of my fourth-story balcony. Well, isn't that just lovely? All right, now, Zach, you're going to ask some questions, and uh, well, we'll just play it by ear from there. Contestant number one. I'm used to doing whatever I want, whenever I want, and getting away with it. How much freedom is in your country? Well, in my country, you can, you can walk, you can uh, talk, you can buy food sometimes, and um, freedom is for white people. Contestant number two. I use the internet a lot. Is there fast Wi-Fi in Panera? Do you mean Panama? That's what I said. Are you seriously um, saying that my country is a fast food chain restaurant? Is this really a question? Contestant number three. I thought this was find your wife, not find your husband. Exactly. Uh, I am a homosexual, but from the looks of things, I am finding my wife now. Remember on Find Your Wife, it's not about finding love, but finding a way out. So on to the second round of questioning. Zach, take it away. Contestant number one. I have been watching the show Narcos recently, and uh, I just want to know how close that is to your everyday life. I don't know if this is going to be easy for you to understand, but it's a fictional series. But uh, if you really want to know, it's going to depend on how much cocaine do you use. And um, by the way, Narcos is based on Colombia. Contestant number two, what country are you from again? Panama. Yeah, um, I think I've heard about that before. Um, why? No, but actually I was going to be born in the States, but you deported my mom, so I didn't have the privilege to be born there. Contestant number three, uh, homosexual undertones aside, um, wasn't France a part of the Nazis or something? Well, uh, I'll have you know, hundreds of thousands of French Jews died in those camps long before your parents could afford condoms. 
We're going to be moving on to the third round of questioning now, and please watch out because things are going to get spicy. Zach? Contestant number one. So I just Googled uh, what Venezuela was, and you know the whole part of this is for me to leave the country, not for you to come in, right? Ahora sí te pasaste, chico. Tú eres un mamá huevo, puto no joda. Contestant number two. So now that we've established that Panama is real, um, what do you guys have there to offer? We have McDonald's, we have Starbucks, we have Taco Bell, we have a Trump Tower. You might like that. And we also have the canal, but you stole that from us. Contestant number three. How strong is your military? Well, you see, uh, French men are p***s. And how many wars have these p***s won? Well, uh, no wars to date except for uh, the war on climate change. We're now going to be moving into the final round of Find Your Wife, where we're going to ask the most important question out there. Zach, what is that question? All right, so this is the final question, and it's for all three of you. And I want to know, how much money do you guys have, and how much money are you willing to give me? I'm doing the mathematical from believers to dollars, I think I have three dollars, and I'm not, I'm not gonna give you that. Maybe if your government would stop stealing taxes from my government, I would have more money. And if I had that money, I wouldn't be talking to you. I, uh, I have a lot of money, but considering how I have seen uh, you now, uh, I wouldn't give you a single cent of it uh, until uh, you submit and do everything I say when I say it, always. Now, Zach, you have heard everyone's pieces using your American deduction skills. Which one do you choose? Uh, I've been thinking long and hard about this, and I think that I'm going to go with the French guy. And why are you going to go with the French guy? Because he has got the most money. Absolutely. Remember, money wins all. Please go. Claim your prize, Zach. That's all the time that we have right now. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Stay tuned, though, because when we come back, we've got a new game show to test out. What's up, dudes? California here to give you the invite to get the hell out of the US. But wait, you say, how does going to California solve any of this? Well, bro, it's simple. We here in California are planning to leave the United States. That's right, one less state on the map and one less star on the flag. We are tired of all these government types telling us who to be and how to live. We didn't sign up for this crazy country, so we made a plan of our own. How will we do this? Well, it's pretty simple and it's pretty well known that the California border is very fragile. So we're going to blow it up. Oh yeah, we're going to detach ourselves from the United States. And wherever the sea might take us is OK with us, because we just plan to go with the flow and live our lives. And in case you're wondering, yeah, this is a totally airtight plan, and it will totally work. We've done the math and everything, and there's only like a 30% chance that the explosive idea doesn't work. So we'll be fine. And the best part is that you don't even need a passport to come live here because you already live in the U.S. All I'm saying is that you guys better hop on the California Express before it leaves the port. Hello and welcome to another new segment we like to call Assimilation. Today we've gathered three contestants who have already bought land in other countries and we're going to be putting them to the test to see how ready they are to assimilate to those foreign nations. Let's meet the contestants. Over here we have Drew, who bought a nice little townhouse in the countryside of England. Then we have Markel, who bought a boathouse in Australia. And lastly, we have Selena, who bought an igloo in Russia. The way the game's gonna work is we have a beautiful board. Uh, each monitor has a category, and each category is the contestant's uh, assimilation country. Um, there's gonna every now and then be a wild card space to spice things up. Are you guys ready to play? Yeah. No. All right, let's awesome. Play. Drew, let's start with you from Australia, England, and Russia. Which one do you pick? I'm going to go with England, please. England it is. 
No way, Mason. No way. Mace. Drew, your question is: The London Eye is another national landmark in movies and TV that keeps getting destroyed. How many times can you uh, name that getting destroyed in movies and TV? You have 60 seconds to answer this, as many as you can choose, starting now. Is the London Eye another name for Big Ben? No, the London Eye is the uh, Ferris wheel. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Okay, that's not correct, but I mean, you tried. We're just gonna move on. You tried. Markel, you now. I see you, I see you got a new court here, but I'll go for Australia. Okay, Australia it is. This national treasure died to a stingray back in 2006. Who was he? How can we forget Tupac? Tupac. He, he was a national... No, steal? it wasn't Tupac. Yes, you can steal. Uh, Steve Irwin? It was Steve Irwin. National treasure. National Truly treasure. died too young. Tupac was a national treasure? Selena. In 2006. Pick a category. I'm going to do the wild card. Okay, it's time for the wild card. Uh, I just want to let you know the wild card is not a question. It's, it's an actual fact. Uh, and that's global warming is a thing. It's, it's not a debate. It's not a question. I just want to make all of you aware that the earth is in fact warming because of human involvement. You all, okay. you all are okay with that? Yeah. You shouldn't be okay with it. You're all going to die. Points for everyone, though. I mean, we're all going to die one day. Drew, it's your turn. So it's your turn to go pick uh, a category. Can I get Rashia for 500? You can definitely please, get Rashia for 500. How do you spell the name of Russia's president? Uh, Vladimir Putin. Mm -hmm. So V L A D Vlad mm -hmm. P U T I N. Putin. What? Yeah, that's, what happened that's... to the Emir? <laughs> Well, obviously it was lost okay. in translation. I'm sorry, Selena. Markel, it's time for you to pick something. Yeah. Um, what category would you choose? I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty cold, so I might go to Russia. Okay, Russia it is. Uh, who lost the space race? Not to be confused with Space Jam. Let's see. I don't think Americans. I think no, wait, Russians. No, 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 you were right the first time. I, yeah. According to Russia, yeah. we lost the space race. <laughs> yeah. Russia won. Yeah, yeah, that's not true. Selena, it's time for you to pick a category. Um, ooh, let me get Australia. Okay, Australia it is. Australia is the sixth largest country oh. in the world. What are the five countries that are larger? Okay, well... No, Hawaii, not Hawaii. No, that's not one of my answers. Say Hawaii. No, uh, no, uh, let's I go with hear. North America. Ca, 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 ca. No, North America is a continent. I'm looking for countries. I mean, I mean, America. Ca, 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 ca. Okay, America. Both of the America. Ca, ca, ca. What's the other? What's the other America? Um. <laughs> Does anyone want to try and, and steal this? And Puerto Markel. Rico. Markel. We got Vietnam. No. Okay, and moving Africa. on. <laughs> Drew, Drew, it's time for you Africa. to pick a category. Nope, you, uh, you, you didn't get it. I have. Uh, I'm going to uh, try my luck with the wild card. Try your guys. luck with the wild card? Okay, it's time for the wild card. After the Sandy Hook shooting in uh, 2012, the NRA argued this actual reason for why the shooting happened and why gun reform was a waste of time. Can I uh, phone a friend? You can definitely phone a friend. Uh, who do you plan on phoning? Uh, my good friend, Buck. You want to phone Buck? Buck. Why? Because he's here and uh, how's it going, Buck? So basically, what had happened was is they were like, if you had guns at schools, then no one would have died. Hey, Buck, yeah, get back thanks, in the cage. Buck. Markel. Uh, let me go for, yeah, then switch it up on my boy. Uh, let me go for Australia. Australia it is. <laughs> Now, Markel, the Great Barrier Reef has been a staple of Australia for hundreds of years, but how many years does it have left? According to here, what are you doing? it looked like you said, huh? 20. Are you cheating? No, 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 man. You're cheating. Anyone else want to steal? 20. Two million. Selena, points for you. Yeah. She looked on my phone, bro. She Selena, was cheating, too. Selena, by the way, your, your turn to pick a category. Um, okay, let me do, let me do any, many, money, Russia. No, okay. Russia it is. How many gold medals did Russia win during the <coughs> Rio 2016 games? Two. Six. Nah. Five. Nah. All right, I give up. Can, can, can you tell me? 19. Oh. You were close, though. You Ooh. weren't even close. Don't even lie. I was. Drew, it's time for you to pick a category. Oh, that wild card's looking good. Of course, the wild card is always good. 
With slavery abolished in 1865, what system do those pesky plantation owners replace it with? Hmm? Let me answer it. Um, sharecropping? Hey, uh, high five for sharecropping. It was actually the birth of um, yeah. Donald Trump's parents. Oh! Markel! <laughs> Markel, time for you to pick a category. Let me get the uh, England. England it is? Yeah. I was born on the same day this person died. August, Who's this person? August 20th. Is it, um, um, Ozzy Osbourne? Ozzy's still alive. I know this Is one. he? Selena. Is it a princess? She was a princess. Is her name Jasmine. Diana? Jasmine. Her name Jasmine. is Diana. Boom! Shut That's right, when there. she was taken out of this world, I was brought into it. Me too, yo. She, she, they killed, she kept her. They should have kept her. I don't remember whose turn it is. Is it yours, Selena? No, it's mine. Oh, Drew, it's yours? Oh. Yeah, I think it's mine. Okay, Drew, it's yours. Uh, We're just to say it's Drew's turn. Australia, please. Australia it is. When Scooby-Doo and the gang went to Australia, what was the monster they had to face? Chupacabra. <coughs> what? Chupacabra. Uh, the boogie man. The boogie man. Vampire. Uh, yes, it was a vampire, and remember, don't, try not to teach the kitties to smoke. Oh. You should do it when you hit four. Mark out. But, um, let me go with Russia. Let me go to Russia. Russia, it is. How many national conventions did Russia hack? Um, somewhere along the lines of zero. <laughs> That's right. Russia <laughs> never hacked any national conventions. So they no say. No matter who tells you otherwise. <laughs> Selena, it's time for you to pick a category. Um, can I do the wild card? You can do the wild card. Okay, let's do it. In the beginning of 1860s, this animal had numbers in the 20 to 25 millions, but thanks to overhunting, they dropped down to 100 by 1889. What was the name of this animal? A bison. Hey, you got it right. Well, that's all the time we have today. Just got um, one question. When do I get my uh, money in the mail? From winning. You think you won? Yeah. Yeah, you're all losers. No one wins this game. Sounds but right. you could tune in next week for another batch of losers on assimilation. Um, yeah, um, it appears you've been canceled. What do you mean we got canceled? I'm telling you, we've just been canceled. Like, only three people are watching this entire time. Oh, Jesus. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we'll be back, ah! Uh, uh, I'm a representative of the glorious Democratic People's Republic of Korea and its glorious leader Kim Jong-un. Our supreme leader is the greatest leader on earth and has given us all we could ever want. He watches over us and assures us a brighter future. He protects us from danger and even ourselves. Our lands are great and prosperous and fields are truly exceptional. Our environment is in top shape compared to the rest of the world as our supreme leader has led our nation into the, its greatest age in its history and is willing to let anyone in who is not afraid to stand up for what is right and uh, acknowledge him as the world's greatest leader and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea as the world's greatest nation. Um, I thought I was going to have a whole season with you guys, but apparently I can't even make 30 minutes. Um, well, it was nice to have this little show going for as long as it did. Um, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna take this with me as long as none of you guys are using it. Um, don't look for me, okay? And uh, I'll, I'll see you later, maybe, bye.